Um, this is a video on phase diagrams and has the statement above that you guys can read on your board at the moment. A phase diagram summarizes the conditions at which a substance exists as a solid, liquid, or gas. This is the phase diagram of water. On the left hand side we have pressure. That's on the y-axis. And on the x-axis we have temperature. Like most phase diagrams, this one is not really all that much to scale. As you can see here on the bottom, this is 0 degrees Celsius and this is only 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. And this is 100 degrees Celsius way out there. So as you can see, there really isn't any scale to this. And again, this represents 0 0.006 atmospheres and this represents 1 atmosphere. Um, in this region right here, these are the temperatures and pressures under which water exists as a solid. In this area right here, these are the temperatures and pressures at which water exists as a liquid. And in these areas right here, in this area right here, excuse me, these are the temperatures and pressures and under which water acts as a vapor or a gas. Each one of these lines represents the dividing line between the two. If the pressure and the temperature for water is found anywhere on this line, right here, between the solid and the liquid, the water sample is in an equilibrium state between the solid and the liquid. If we establish the pressure and the temperature of a sample of water somewhere is on this line right here, then the water is in an equilibrium state between the liquid and the vapor. And of course, if we establish the temperature and pressure of water somewhere is on this line right here, then of course it's in an equilibrium state between the solid state and the vapor state. This point right here, my friends, this is known as the triple point. This triple point is the point at which a sample of water at 0 .006 atmospheres and 0 .01 degrees Celsius will exist in all three states of matter. So you'll have some of the sample will be a solid, some of the sample will be a liquid, and some of the sample will be a vapor. It will be a solid, a liquid, and a vapor, all together in equilibrium. If we go way out here to the end of this curve, and it's not shown very well in this particular curve, we have here the temperature for water. Out here at the end of this, we have what's known as the critical temperature. This is the temperature above which, no matter how much pressure you apply, the liquid water, I'm sorry, the vapor water, or water as a vapor, cannot liquefy. Any so this is the maximum temperature at which you can liquefy water by using pressure. And it's this temperature way out here. It's like 370 something degrees. So, at this temperature, you can apply a specific amount of pressure, which is known as the critical pressure, to vapor water, or water in a vapor state, and it will liquefy. But if you go above and beyond this temperature, no matter how much pressure you apply to the vapor, it will not liquefy. Water is a little bit of an odd substance because this line between the liquid and the solid has a negative slope. Most substances, this line is a positive slope. It's a negative slope because water is kind of an oddball. If you go back to the video in which we talked about how water forms three-dimensional crystal structures which are very open as it solidifies, this is the reason why we have this line being having or having excuse me a negative slope and as we can see from this line 
it also indicates that the density of solid water is less than that of liquid water. This is the phase diagram for carbon dioxide, which looks a lot more like what phase diagrams for most substances would look like. We have the area in which it's a solid under pressure and temperature conditions, and we have the area in which it remains a liquid, and then we have the area for which it is a vapor. Out here is the critical temperature, and again, that's the temperature at which above that temperature no amount of pressure can actually take the vapor and cause it to be liquefied. The triple point here this is very interesting and it gives us some information as to why carbon dioxide which is also known as dry ice if it's in a solid state does not melt it sublimes. Here is our normal atmospheric pressure right here one atmosphere of pressure. Its triple point takes place at 5.2 atmospheres. We can see that the triple point is well above our normal atmospheric pressure. And so at a pressure of one atmosphere it only requires a temperature of about negative 78 degrees in order for it to transfer from the solid directly to the vapor. In order for us to actually get dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, to melt we would have to bring its, the pressure uh, above it to somewhere above 5.2 atmospheres so that it could actually exist on this line at, at any temperature above negative 57 degrees Celsius. If the pressure is above 5.2 atmospheres, it will actually transfer from a solid to a liquid. So in order to get solid carbon dioxide, dry ice, to melt, we would have to raise the pressure above it to a pressure above 5.2 which is the pressure of its triple point. And there's a nice sample of dry ice. This is the end of this particular video on phase diagrams.